So Brian, you recently put out an X post talking about the problem of loose language and semantics in, in the AI community. Can you say more about your post and maybe expound on what you were trying to get at? Well, yes, sure. You, uh, what the post was about was the term hallucination in the context of large language models. Uh, it is a term that has become uh, widely, widely used. And uh, what people um, are referring to is the fact uh, that uh, a lot of times uh, the text that uh, large language models generate, although they always sound authoritatively and convincing and they sound exactly like a human, uh, sometimes they uh, have no correspondence with reality. In other words, when you comprehend the words, the things that are asserted by the words are patently false. And people call that an hallucination. And uh, uh, that is just now rife. Everybody talks about hallucinations. And then that, that ensued a big, a big uh, long going, a long running commentary or controversy, I should say, as to whether or not that was just a kind of a, a, a short term bug in large language models that could soon be corrected or whether um, uh, it was a basic built-in characteristic or feature of LLMs uh, that could not that would would not go away, although it might be mitigated. Or that or was that even a problem? <laughs> uh, so uh, I I really object to, to use that term, and I myself resist using the term. I will not say they hallucinate, and the reason is. Uh, that word hallucination uh, has been pulled uh, from uh, the context of uh, human uh, uh, cognition and human uh, mental pro processes, and it means something quite specific there. Namely, it is a malfunction. It is a, an aberration of humans' sensory or cognitive apparatus such that uh, it's not normal, okay? And so uh, that's a problem, and when humans have these uh, abnormal uh, hallucinations, this psychologic phenomenon, then you, you go to the psychiatrist or the doctor or the, and, and you get to work on this problem. Uh, now, the people who are promoting LLMs, they would rather say, yeah, they, they leverage on that because if it's a problem, then they can insinuate or state that, oh, it's, it's, we'll fix it later. We'll get it. We'll get, it'll get better. If we'll fix it. But in fact, if you look at the reality of what's going on here, it's not that suddenly their LLMs are outputting checks and checks and something boom, something breaks and they start hallucinating and output stuff that doesn't make any sense. That's not at all what's happening. All the words they generate are generated by the same processing algorithms, and it's all the same. There's no sudden malfunctions. The phenomenon is due to the fact that uh, when they generate these texts, they are just sequencing words on a statistical basis uh, so that they're likely to correspond to something a human might say, but without knowing what the words mean, there's absolutely no connection uh, between the meaning of the words and any knowledge of reality. So what would you think about that? Well, since that uh, they sound like words that most people would say about a given topic, the content or the meaning is likely to track that sometimes, but sometimes not. And there's no there's no hallucination going on. Either you say it's all hallucination or none of it's hallucination, because there's no malfunctions going on here. So it's patently wrong. But you know, when Gary Marcus, uh, you know, who commented in my post said, uh, "Oh, I've given up on that," um, you know, I felt, I've been fighting that battle for months. I, I give up meaning fighting the battle of not calling it hallucinations when everybody else is. So that's, you know, that's a phenomenon. And we, we throw in the towel and that kind of thing all, all, all the time when a standard uh, uh, word or term starts to become jargon, which means that in the context of a certain context, it means something else. And you could say, well, that's what hallucination in the context of LLM. It doesn't mean malfunction. It means this particular diversion from, from, from reality. Well, okay, but uh, the people who are hyping this stuff, uh, they're using this to confuse people. And they are, it's, it's a rhetorical device. And uh, because they're selling something, 
And so they'll play on connotations and associations with a word that don't belong to it. And ultimately, if you do that too much and in the wrong way, you actually create a phenomenon called cognitive dissidence. And cognitive dissidence is defined as uh, when you are told something, uh, that something is true uh, or so about uh, something you already have a concept about what it is, and, it, and it's completely contrary to what you know, but yet it comes from a, uh, a, a, uh, an authoritative source, you're thrown in this state of dissidence. And you can either abandon what you used to think and say, oh, I guess I was wrong. Or you can accept the new picture and get rid of the dissonance that way. Or if you can't, or you can say, that's BS. I'm not going to accept you, that you say that, even though you're authoritarian, and go on and keep your original concept. Or you can't really resolve it either way, and you live in the state of dissonance. Uh, and confusion. And I think the best example of that is what's happened to the term artificial intel intelligence itself. Now, early on, in the beginning of when, as it became an industry, particularly going back to about the 1950s, 1956, precisely when the term was coined, it simply really meant kind of, a, let's go imitate human intelligence and see what we can do. And we didn't necessarily have to have to define it too much because we all kind of have a sense of what human intelligence is and that's just what we were comparing so we're trying to simulate or emulate features or characteristics as we imagine them to be of human intelligence which is hard because we don't know how human intelligence work we don't know what's going on in the brain uh we can only kind of compare um in results a little bit but that too as i pointed out many times is problematical because if a mechanical adding machine can do arithmetic better than i can is it AI? Because, you know, so no, that's not what we mean by AI. So it, the thing with the cognitive dissidence, it has changed its term. In fact, in the in the more than uh, more than a de decade and more that New Sa Sapiens has been working on uh, our very unique approach to creating synthetic knowledge, the term AI has changed and morphed through common usage to become synonymous with machine learning applications. And now we have AI synonymous with generative AI, which is a machine learning application, but of a specific sort. So, and yet, if people say, what are you doing at New Sapiens? And we tell them that we're synthesizing human knowledge and putting it into machines so that machines can use it to solve problems, predict, um, um, predict the consequences of actions and comprehend human language, they go, oh, that's AI, but it's not machine learning. So the problem why AI keeps giving him cognitive, keeps this cognitive dissonance thing going is we can't accept it that it's a narrow technical slangy term because we, we can't get rid of our, our basic intuitive feeling an experience of being an intelligent entity. So we're always going to relate it back to our experience of being an intelligent entity. But if we have Sam Altman and Satya Nadella and, you know, and uh, all these CEOs of the big tech companies telling us we're pioneering, making great strides on AI, people believe they mean the same thing by the, the I, the intelligence word, as human intelligence. They can't not. It's just too hard to do. Uh, and so it's creating cognitive dissonance. It's rhetoric. Maybe to use a less, a less uh, um, attractive word, it's lying. <laughs> right. Uh, because and people are saying AI. So they're saying, oh, no, no, I meant AI as a technical term. Right, I, I meant it in a jargony sense, or yeah, um, I, I don't mean it to relate to the original words, but that's just not, not, nothing we can get away from. Truly, as I've said, if if the term artificial intelligence, I mean, if it's not just two noises, ha if it's to have any meaning, then 
no one then intelligence in a machine and intelligence in a human mind can't be fundamentally different things, although they can work in a fundamentally different way. But it, it, no one disagrees about what the word artificial means. So if we don't agree what AI means, it means we're really talking about intelligence and disagreeing what, what it is. Well, that's fine. We can disagree about what intelligence is. But in the end, if, it, if, the, if the end results not look alike, but are the same, then we have intelligence. And let's let's unpack that a little bit. Gen AI looks like words, sounds like words that people say. And it's intelligible and that people understand what it means. Okay. But it's an imitation that it sound, it's a mimicry or a parroting of human language in that like a parrot the lm doesn't have any comprehension of what the words mean or the meaning of what it says or reality or of anything else so you know that's part of then what comes in to uh, to the cognitive problems with cognitive dissidence we make the distinction very clearly that if you if your approach to artificial intelligence is just to imitate the appearance of AI. Maybe that'll get you there, but more likely what you'll get is an illusion of intelligence, which is exactly what ALMs provide. It's just the same thing as the illusion that a piece of costume jewelry has of a diamond. Okay. What do they call those rhinestones uh, made out of Pace. They can be pretty flashy, um, but they're not real diamonds. Now, real doesn't necessarily doesn't have to mean natural. The AI community always tries to mimic natural intelligence, but at New Sapiens, we found that there's another way. We don't have to mimic human intelligence if we can possibly synthesize the end product of human intelligence in a machine or for a machine, and that end product, the useful end product of human intelligence. Is practical knowledge of the world. That's what that's what humans you do with their intelligence. They create knowledge of the world, those internal models of reality, which allow us to go out and build things and change nature. That's what humans do. That is why we call ourselves or define ourselves as the intelligent animals. But in this case, the end product is knowledge. If you can synthesize knowledge, it doesn't matter that it wasn't a product of natural intelligence. If it functions and, and gives the machine the same power and capabilities that natural intelligence has given human beings. And in the case of machines, maybe even better. So uh, again, they, it, it's, not, it, it's not artificial versus natural. Intelligence means the same thing. It's a question of um, imitation versus synthetic. A synthetic diamond is a real diamond same crystal lattice just wasn't created by natural means so here we go and i, I made a, a, a supplement post uh from the one about the illusions talking about i don't think i mentioned cognitive dissidence but it goes back to what happens when you're in a state of cognitive dissidence you always try to reconcile your worldview somehow um with with uh, what you already know is true. So if if everyone says LLMs are AI, and we mean by the I, intelligence, kind of as we perceive it in ourselves, and we understand intuitively that our intelligence is a phenomenon of our mind and our thinking and thought processes. So then if what AI, if generative AI generates um, these words, the, this language, and we are told that this is a great stride forward in AI and therefore intelligence, and it looks like the product of a human mind, then LLMs must have a mind. And therefore, it's okay if we use a whole bunch of other language we talk about. So we say, well, LLMs 
um, they're pretty good at, you know, they're, they're pretty good at understanding language, but they're lousy at understanding math. And even the people who do not believe that LLMs are in fact, you know, the on ramp to artificial general intelligence, even ones who think it's, they're not, you'll still find them using in terms like it understands this, but it doesn't understand that. But again, cognitive dissidence, understanding is a phenomenon of a mind. So you should, if you don't think LLMs have a mind, then you should never say they understand anything. You should say, well, they get good answers from these inputs over here, but crappy answers if you ask them about something over there. Why is that? Well, you can find out why. It's not hard to do the analysis of why LLMs are good at some things and not good at others. They're going to be good at mimicking where most of the information is in the data set. But if you're talking about something obscure with very little information in the data set, they're not going to do well. And mathematics doesn't lend itself to the kind of pattern, repeated patterns that uh, natural language does in terms of spoken language. So they don't have all the patterns that they train on. They'll get maybe how many places where you know, 2 plus 2 with 4 is written down. Yeah, they'll get that right. But any two arbitrary numbers, it's meaningless. That's not their numbers. So um, people talk themselves into it. You know, they, 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 they talk themselves into believing these things must have a mind. But that is a logical fallacy. Same results, similar results may imply similar causes, but they may not. Many things can produce similar causes through entirely different processes. Like look at the different, how different the process of getting a natural diamond from an artificial diamond. It takes, you know, it takes smashing two continents together in millions of years to make natural diamonds. And synthetic diamonds can be made in the lab, you know, in a few days or however long it takes. Very vastly different. So I would I would urge people to be more precise in their thinking and say, well, is it really proper to say, you know, I understand this? You know, when as we're building um our, our sapiens, our kind of artificial intellects and endowing them with knowledge and, and common knowledge. One of the things they do immediately, if you make a statement, is they'll see the terms you, you're using and you put them together in a certain grammar. And then they'll go look up the concepts behind those words and they'll see if it makes sense to put those words together based on the concepts themselves, not just because people said it or a million people said it. If a million people said, you know, the Earth is flat and it's in the data set, this, it's, you know, LNM will say it's flat. <laughs> you know, that's that. There is um, uh, an earlier, uh, I think it was JetGP2, uh, earlier JetGP, when they first started to get a lot of PR and uh, they, they gave it a seed. Um, uh, A, 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 a prompt that said that scientists had, had discovered a a species of unicorns living in a remote Indian valley, and it was even more important to find that even more astonishing was that the unicorn spoke perfect English, and so that's what came out. So um, I fed that same line to a sapiens, and it just came right and said, "Oh no, I got a problem with that. Unicorns can't speak." This was without any training, but it knew that speaking was a, a word, was a concept, an action that only certain things could, actors could perform, in this case, speaking. And it, and it happened to know what, that a unicorn was an, an animal and that animals don't speak, and it just rejected the statement. That's what, that's what we call common sense. Well, you know, so our sapiens has it, but it doesn't look like people, you know, I would say these people who are going around talking about what LLMs understand this, but don't understand that. That's not common sense. <laughs> you know, you know what, one of the differences between sapiens and chat GPT, probably the biggest difference is the differentiation between knowledge and hallucination. You know, sapiens have knowledge, so they have common sense, whereas 
ChatGPT and all LLMs in general, they just hallucinate from whatever is in the data set. Um, another thing that they have... Don't say that word. <laughs> they make, you know, they're generating it. The generation is the right word. Make something up again. It's something the human mind does. Hallucinate right. the human mind does, you know. Uh, and a sapiens can't, uh, can't do that. Uh, maybe if we make the program so complicated someday that it can malfunction internally, it might. But right now, they, they're... Sapiens are perfectly sane. <laughs> right. I was, my, my next question was going to be, you know, instead of hallucination, you know, Marcus, um, you know, also said that hallucination is one of the words that it just unfortunately stuck in the AI community. And so from the perspective of Brian Cruz, um, you just answered the question, generation should be the more precise yeah. word that we use. You generate text. I, I am somewhat surprised and even amazed that the generate gener text generation or image generation and generative AI have stuck because if they kept going the way they were good, they would talk about talking and speaking and reading in terms of, I was talking to my thing. It was, it said to me, it was talking back, it was speaking, it was writing. We don't say that they write, do we? We say they generate text. Thank goodness. And I think, why is that? I think maybe is that everybody, in terms of being able to be led or pushed into using certain terms and to adapting jargon, maybe it's just certain lines that people won't cross. <laughs> they know it's not talking to them. They know it's not a writer. It's generating a document. It's not writing. Writing is a process that we understand very well when we do it and what we have to go through. And perhaps people do have a hard time imagining that that you know that the uh, in, in some sense, in some in some metaphorical sense, the the G, GPT is sitting there and going, "Hmm, oh, well, let's see what word would best express that." Doesn't do that. We know it doesn't do that, right? And so sapiens have common sense, whereas Chat GPT just has whatever is in the data set and it spits out text um, and generates whatever nonsense it does. Um, so as we saw in your example, it can say, you know, unicorns speak perfect English, whereas if you give that to a sapiens, a sapiens will come back and say, no, actually, that doesn't make any sense. So from the perspective of sapiens, would you say a sapiens can write, a sapiens can do all of these things because it has common sense? How do we think about precise language when it comes to sapiens? Well, um... Of course, reading and writing just refers to written text. But in fact, uh, if we talk about the the uh, process of comprehending language or articulating ideas, um, uh, let's go back and we can, again, you need to be very precise. What do you mean? You know, what is the difference between the text that, GP, the text that GPT-3 puts out is not an articulation of an idea, it can't be, it doesn't have any ideas to articulate. So what does it mean to articulate? Or the opposite, the symmetrical thing articulation is to comprehend. You take an input, somebody speaks to you. And, you know, in a sense you say, well, I process it. But in a sense, it's, we really, if it works, if I quote, understood what you said, I comprehended the language. Well, what does that mean? Well, you can, you can, Take apart that process. It's not that hard just as a thought process. You know, imagine a Socratic dialogue taking it apart. So what's going on there? So you have an idea you start with. First, you need to articulate it. So you go through and you, and let's say the idea is unicorns, you know, you know uh, only people can speak language. So let's say that's the thing you want to teach. Uh, so you, 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 you encode it people only people and you pick up words for speaking the action the verb and you put them together in a certain way in a certain order so you encode it in language the idea the thought the concept of, of what can speak you've encoded it in words now i ship it over to somebody i'm only giving give it to somebody that the encoded idea it's not an idea it's just an it's a it's a it's a processing instruction I'm saying, I'm going to go give you this process of instruction that if you process it correctly, 
and that pro we have a name for that processing. It's understand or process or, or comprehend. If you understand, if you can understand it, then you will have this new idea that you didn't have before that I already had and you didn't. So you tip it over there, and then in the comprehension process of the understanding process, the person who, whether it came in via text or came in via audi audible uh, sounds, you convert it to words and you 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 decode the grammar and you do a semantic analysis of the words themselves and which are telling you to go into your pre-existing library of concepts and pull out those concepts as as component concepts to the new concept the new idea and you assemble them together in a certain way and that's what happened to the sapiens, when you said uh, the unicorn spoke English, he got up the speaking and the unicorn and the speaking and put unicorn speaking together, and he it couldn't, it didn't fit. Uh, error, rejection. That's comprehension. Or understanding. I don't, I don't, if, if somebody wants to define a comprehension and understanding differently, I think understanding may be a broader term. Uh, you know, but but they are used pretty much interchangeably. I, I, I tend to use them interchangeably. Uh, but I mean something very specific about them, and that is that um, um, in terms of language, applying to language, it again, is that process of, I just described. LLMs do not do that process. See, one thing human beings do. One thing LLMs do have is a lot of hype behind them. Uh, it's touched every corner of the media it seems like we cannot escape the grasps of LLM headlines. Um, ironically, those headlines were could have been generated. The entire article could have been generated by those LLMs. More and more so they how, are. <laughs> precisely. But how does this problem of loose language lend itself to hype? Well, you know, there used to be two ways of, of communicating or two processes when people are talking. Uh, what is it, what's the intent here? You know, two people talking uh, and trying to come up with a common uh, agreement about something. That is, here's a problem they're trying to solve jointly by putting their heads together, or they're trying to um, come to a new shared idea. That that's process uh, is called dialectic, two people sharing ideas through language, dialectic. The other side of it is rhetoric. Rhetoric is when one person is trying to convince another person of something. And, uh, you know, advertising is rhetoric. It, rhetoric isn't necessarily always a bad thing, but it's got a different intent. You're not trying to agree upon or establish the truth of something. You're trying to convince. You're trying to convince another person of that. And in the world of advertising and in the marketing and things like that, anything, you know, is considered fair game in terms of bending the meaning of words a little bit or playing on uh, connotations of words or... <laughs> distracting people with, you know, attractive images or, or whatever. I mean, anything to get, to get the person's attention and to get the job done. So in the world of artificial intelligence, it, it carries a, a great weight, a great cachet of progress, advancement, uh, going all the way back into the sci-fi movies of the 50 and and robots and a world of uh, wonders and abundance. So, you know, AI has this sexy cachet to it. And so that's why, you know, uh, e even though over the many decades where people have tried this and tried that to create artificial intelligence and failed, they never stopped calling it AI, <laughs> you know, but in the new jargony terms, you know, oh, well, that didn't work. So, oh, well, I don't want to say that you imagine this scenario, you know, the researcher goes to his funders and who funded him to do something, you know, maybe with symbolic AI or some many networks and it failed. So um, you don't go in and say, well, um, that that was a bust. Can you give me money to try something else? No. Not this one. You say, well, we we advanced the state of the art of AI. We've created the, we, we've made some progress here. Uh, let's call it narrow AI. Okay. Let's not call it failed AI. Now, to call it narrow AI implies that it's on a path to real AI. 
And of course, that is rampant today. Oh, we made great progress. And one side of the mouth, we're talking about the great progress in AI. And the other side of the mouth, the same people are talking about AGI, which is, that was another term, another jargony term that was created specifically to make it, to, to distinguish the goal, which is still out there from all the failed attempts at that goal, which we now call narrow AI. And all those narrow AI techniques are not properly called artificial intelligence in, in, this, in the sense in which we all intuitively know what we mean when we talk about intelligence and we intuitively mean uh, about artificial intelligence. We know what we mean. We mean machines that think like us, that have minds. They can speak, they can comprehend, they can articulate. We haven't seen that yet, except we're seeing it today in Sapiens, but that's for the first time ever. So all that narrow AI is not AI at all. If you want to be precise about your language, and you should be.